things have changed quite dramatically over the last few months and you know with the lockdown and the pandemic and stuff so uh, obviously you've, you've put a new record out as well and so how are you sort of staying creative at the moment how are you keeping yourself motivated um, you know through this kind of difficult challenging time for everyone well um, well we just uh, last uh, last Friday, so a couple of days ago, released our uh, the the rentals. My yeah. band, yeah. the rentals, released our first album in in some time. It's called yeah. Q thirty. It's called Q thirty six. It's a a double album where all the songs are they're all connected by either they they take place in outer space or they're connected by science fiction in some way. Uh, so it's kind of science fiction and nonfiction. Uh, songs that are all that are all bound together by those those ideas and themes you know yeah uh and and we were uh trying to figure out you know how we wanted this is some some time back we're trying to figure out how we wanted to release it and we're kind of going through all the traditional channels uh and all and kind of you know, you know talking to record labels and those kinds of things and at some point, I just got very frustrated because everything seemed to be like not living in the time that uh, that that we're based in, and it's a tough time for all creative industries, anyways. Before the pandemic, uh, just you know, you know that everybody has limited resources, and it's sort of if you're making a movie or a book or a painting or a, or an album or whatever yeah, you're trying yeah. to do, it's uh, you know, it's not. You know, it's we're not in in, in the uh, roaring twenties of uh, of the nineteen twenties. You know, we're in the, we're in, in in these twenties, and they're quite different from uh, from that. And so we were, and we were trying to figure out like these, the, you know, the way to release it, and talking to various companies, and everything seemed uh, so incredibly cautious. Is the only way I could. Uh, Put it when we were talking to people about just you know how they would approach it and what they would do and it's not slighting anybody but it would be more like okay well we're thinking about releasing your record next year in the third quarter uh we'll probably take six months to you know kind of build up uh yeah. before you know this but you know and release us the first single three months before the album comes out and all this kind of stuff and it was just uh something that was really difficult to uh to swallow because you knew ultimately like any movie any book any painting any any album any single any double album any anything is going to go away after two weeks you know yeah. uh that's just how we consume culture now and it's and so you know it's gonna have its i mean and two weeks would be uh on the on the you really did you really did something extraordinary if you get two weeks worth of attention you know so usually it's a half a day or a quarter of a day or whatever it might be so uh that was something that uh just made me just uh, become very frustrated with that prospect of this album uh is something that took uh quite quite some time for me to just figure out how I wanted to approach it, who, you know, who I would be collaborating with and the sort of the time and the, um, the dedication to telling the story that we wanted to tell. Uh, the record was done, started with uh, myself and Nick Zinner, the guitar player from the AAS. Yeah. And awesome. when, you know, you come to respect the people that you're collaborating with, like Nick, and you want to give it the, the, absolute best chance to be heard and shared and uh, all of those things and you realize oh my god this thing's not going to come out for a million years it's going to come out you know like in the <laughs> third quarter of the next year of the next year or whatever and when it comes out it's going to have its its half of the day and it's going to be gone so i uh, frustratingly called my manager and said oh my god this is these prospects of are, are making me nuts i said if on the next when we get past this album you know and we go into the whatever then the next thing is i i just said i'm i want to release just like one song every two weeks yeah and uh and we'll just celebrate that song and figure out 
uh, a way to use that song as a platform for other people to uh, kind of use as a diving board to create new things and, you know, and sort of talking in this manner. And then it, <laughs> in the middle of me uh, doing that, I realized, well, why aren't, well, you know, why the hell aren't we doing that in this actual moment? You know, here we have, we've, you know, we've just, uh, we've just completed this thing. Why, you know, why, why uh, try to do the thing you want to do today, tomorrow, you know, do the thing you want to do today, today. Yeah. So, uh, so I told my manager, I would call him back and I hung up the phone and I called around to, I don't know, 10, 20 different creative folks that I know that are uh, creative art uh, design people, uh, you know, what people that do visual arts with videos and, and all, all sorts of things. And just sort of got uh, an interest if they would be uh, just sort of gauge their, their thoughts about collaborating on something together where we just put out one song every two weeks and just try to have as much fun as we can. Uh, and everybody that I spoke with, all these different artists from different, uh, different backgrounds, all shared that same common feeling. And it was very relatable for every one of them to go, oh yeah, I feel that, you know, <laughs> I have those same frustrations. I have these, uh, you know, whatever it might be. Because like me, people, you know, put a lot of their, time and their passion and their thing into something and they realize it's just going to be consumed like that and then you know digested quickly and uh so every there was just such passion to go yeah let's let's do something let's and i basically called my guy back and said you know uh i want to do what we just talked about i want to release a song every two weeks and i want to start now like what's the suit what's the what's the quickest date on the calendar i can't remember what it was it was two or three or four weeks away it was maybe three weeks i think uh from that phone call and he said yeah if you start now if you give me a song now we can start like I, in three weeks or something so i gave him a song and we just jumped into it without any <laughs> any real without any real idea of what we were getting ourselves into that was back in november nice uh, and it's been uh, so I know this is you would ask me about this in, in the midst of the, the pandemic in November. No, like, I mean, I suppose there was, you know, in, in the, the U.S. there was whispers of, of uh, some things going on in you know, other parts of the world. But we didn't nobody was taking the idea of the pandemic in any way. Seriously, mm -hmm. uh, we certainly weren't thinking about it as far uh, as uh, how we were going to approach something. Yeah, and we've just been uh, on this uh, on this thing of putting a song out and then reaching out to different creative people to see if you know in in different ways that we can collaborate using whatever the the that's in the song is like little launching points to to do all sorts of things, um, and we we were in that rhythm until you know all the way. Through through this, uh, uh, before the pandemic and through the pandemic to where we are now, uh, up until, up until, uh, you know, last Friday. So, so I guess the thing that feels very lucky about it is I have other friends who, you know, were doing the thing where they had a record that was coming out in its full form all at once. And it either got swallowed up by the, the pandemic itself and lost, or or completely cut off their ability to promote the record and be able to perform and play shows and all those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, and I feel horrible for those people because I know they're good friends of mine who have, you know, <laughs> they, they put their their passion and everything on the line and their and something that they you know, uh, want to share with people in a certain way. And then, and, and, uh, the pandemic sort of, uh, robbed them of that ability yeah. to, to, to do that. And we're very lucky in that this, the, there's 16 songs on uh, Q36 and 
none of them are the the we're not in in American terms. We're you know none of the songs need to be a home run. Like we're sharing each song one at a time. They each have equal value. Uh, we share the story behind the what the song is about or or had shared the song. You know, and we're able to like give a little sense of like what it was like to make those the the music behind the scenes and and use it to create new things. And it so when the pandemic hit. We had to delay things a little bit here or there, but more or less, uh, it didn't affect us because it was oddly set up for uh, for something. You know, it was it was oddly set up for that. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's an interesting. It moves on nicely to my next question: Is you know, how has this, how has Q thirty six sort of challenged you in new ways as an artist? Because you know, I mean, you answered some of that with regards to the pandemic but in terms of the way you've made records before you've obviously collaborated with people quite a lot and things have come a long way since your time with Weezer so how is how is Q36 and developing it in terms of you know again the way it's put out the way you create and the way you push yourself how has that changed and developed with this record oh well there's some big <clears throat> some very big things uh, for me uh, one being that uh, I guess anything prior to this record, it would have just started with me, uh, you know, writing some sketches of ideas, and most of them were just uh, directly from my personal story or personal history, or you know, you know, may maybe attempting some poetic flair or whatever. But more or less, they were just a <laughs> slice of life. This is going on in my life, you know, whatever, uh, and. When I uh, when I picked up the, the guitar to like start writing for this, I wrote a handful of things, and they were more of that sort of writing. And honestly, it just uh, I, I it just bored the hell out of me. My own story, my own um, uh, you know whatever whatever it, it just didn't interest me to continue writing that way. So the first challenge of the record. Uh, was just to say, okay, well, you don't, I mean, whenever you start a record or, or whenever I start a record, I don't have a, a complete intention of where it's going. You just yeah. say, let's write a ton and then you'll figure, you'll be able to step back and figure it out. Uh, so my first challenge with this album was to just to say, write 50 songs and none of those songs can start from you. They can't, they can't start. Wow. You know. Okay. So start from there and then just see what you're interested in and what you would write about if you're not, you know, what happens when you have to write and your whole life you've been writing just these, you know, personal stories. But now to see, like, take some time and see what stories you're interested in uh, from other people and other people's, uh, and, and maybe there's a reason you connect with, you know, that, that you're sort of interested in, the, in, in those set of stories. Yeah. Um, so that was the biggest thing for me was that was just saying, you know, I can't go <laughs> start from this is this personal thing is happening in my life. Uh, or, you know, oh, I'm in this new relationship and I'm feeling so happy or, oh, my last relationship fell apart and I'm so sad or <laughs> whatever it might be. You know, all the typical things that uh, that musicians write about quite often uh, instead of that, just saying like, OK, well, you know, what are you interested in? And, that, that part of that was uh, one big part. And the, I would say the other really um, uh, big thing for me was the album started with uh, Nick Sinner. Uh, and it was something where uh, I had I had thought about working with him for a, a long time, uh, yeah. for 10 years or more. And, but I was never sure that he would uh, we we had met we had just like talked about it in in uh, passing for like two seconds you know ten fifteen years ago maybe more uh, of you know someday I would love if we could do something together and when I had finished writing these fifty ideas uh, I invited him uh, to my little home studio and uh, played him uh, a few things and said you know what I, the my feeling is if you connect to these first few things that i 
play for you. I want you to listen to all of these uh, songs, these 50 songs, and I want you to choose what we're going to work on. I don't want to be, I, for, the, for somebody, myself, I've been a very, <laughs> over, overly so, hands-on, okay. uh, micromanaging uh, kind of uh, figure in the, uh, in, when I'm directing these sort of albums we're working on. Uh, and my first decision with, with this was to say, it, I want it to be Nick's connection to the music so that, that he feels that everything that he's working on is something that he has like some sense of ownership over, uh, yeah. that, he had, that, that he's not having to work on it because... Uh, well, I kind of like these eight songs, but these ones over here, I'm not really feeling <laughs> whatever. And I'm kind of, you know, biting my tongue through them or whatever it might be. I, said, I just wanted to make sure it was something that he felt like a real connection with. And so that is also very different because I certainly would um, never have let go of the reins like that uh, in the past. Yeah. And I did that with the, I did that with Nick. I did that somewhat with uh, Dave Fridman, who mixed the album. Uh, the way we collaborated on it, I knew I had to be strong enough to, you know, he's a, he has a very distinct way of uh, producing records, and you, you have to under, go into it with him knowing he's going to have a very heavy hand, and, and, uh, and, uh, and you go to him for that reason but he's going to put his <laughs> imprint on it, yeah. you know? Uh, and I think in the past, I didn't want mixers to do that so much. I wanted them to more so um, see my vision through and not br not necessarily bring their point of view to it. I, is, uh, <laughs> I mean, even though you respect them and, you, and, and you're, you're going to them because they have great talent, you're, yeah. you're still saying, okay, I understand, but, but do it do it the way I want you to do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, so would it be a stretch then for me to say you had a bit more fun with this record? Because obviously you've got the sci-fi theme on there, you know, the tracks like Elon Musk is making me sad and Conspiracy, which are, are really good fun, obviously, you know, it's just a, it's a, it's a good record. And it sounds like you're having a bit more fun. Would that be a little bit more, you've relinquished a little bit more of that creative control, so you're a little bit more... Dare I say it? Dare I say it? Relaxed and having a bit more fun. <laughs> I'll say this: uh, I I can't. Uh, I've always uh, struggled with uh, singing. You know, it's been right. a from right. the from the first Weezer record. Uh, yeah. I had just started singing probably months before we recorded that album. I mean, <laughs> a tiny bits in the clubs or whatever, doing these tiny little parts, but I'd never had to actually make a record before. Uh, and struggled mightily with singing in tune and singing, uh, you know, with the, with, you know, and you, when you're, when you're first attempting anything, you don't know who you are until you do it. Like whatever the Malcolm Gladwell is, 10,000, 10,000 reps or whatever it is before you find your voice. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so that, that was always a struggle and more so with the rentals when I had to, Kind of convey the story of the of the song and take and, and be the the lead vocalist and those kind of things were were so some of the most difficult times in my life not i mean you still have to tell the story you have to tell and you do it the best way you can do it and but some of those those moments of trying to uh get that thought across through <laughs> the act of singing was just torturous you know yeah uh, uh, just because you you couldn't sing in tune and you couldn't you and you don't know why and your mind you know whatever it might be and and that was all that really followed me right all the way through uh the previous record called lost in alphaville yeah and on that record i just decided they're like i don't care how long it takes i don't care what i'm gonna this record is gonna be wait <laughs> i don't use uh any uh, uh thing effects to like keep my vocal in tune or whatever. I just can't, that's a, a, a no, no for me. Right. Uh, so on that record, I'm like, I don't care what it takes. Every one of these songs is going to be sung in tune. I don't care how many times I have to do it or whatever. <laughs> I'm going to figure it out. And it's real. Uh, and that the, 
vocals on that record are much more like uh, um, uh, they're much more like controlled because of I'm so worried about that thing uh, right. and it's it's making me <laughs> live in a very limited space or whatever uh, and I actually think maybe that gives that maybe that helps that album maybe that's what that album was supposed to be about but come but there's one of those things where you go through a process like that uh it was a really uh a difficult process that album because i had to go to vocal teachers and new vocal teachers and i went in with such little confidence i was singing so poorly uh and so you kind of have to swallow your pride and sort of start from the beginning and that kind of stuff and that was uh in 2014 that we released that record and Coming into this album, I didn't have all of that stuff seemed to be gone, and I was able to uh, sing with without having to think about it so much. Maybe it was that record broke me, or not not that I'm a, <laughs> right. you know not you know not that I'm Adele or something, but uh, but but it allowed me. I felt so much more uh, open on this album and so, and so uh, in such a better place to be able to express myself and to um, have, like you said, have fun uh, yeah. and, and uh, get a little looser and not worry. And I just didn't, I it was more just about the, the performance and I would have friends of mine from uh, different uh, artists and groups that would listen to stuff as I was, we were in the middle of the production. Whenever I was kind of getting a little uh, uh, looser with it, they were just like, yes, go, go, you know, go in that direction, go to that place or whatever. And they, that was the thing that connected with them. Um, and so it was, uh, that part of it was so much more pleasurable for me. Good. Uh, it, it made the album um, uh, a much better experience. Good. Uh, so there was that. And then the, the part of not singing about, uh, you know, these, uh, about just the, the, God, the, I don't know what you call it, but more like just the research aspect of the, the, the album of looking into other people's stories and to kind of going down all of these different um, paths was also uh, much more like in, intellectually stimulating. It was just much. <laughs> It was such a pleasure just to do that, to, to feel like you could just get lost in other people's stories and kind of do uh, the sort of back research that maybe like an actor would do for a, a role or something like that, where they want to know what is, what is this, uh, you know, some, sometimes these characters in the songs are real, were real people and sometimes they're, uh, you know, uh, just fables. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it just, you know, trying to understand their backstory or their real life story uh, was uh, a ton of uh, fun, for sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I do want to talk a bit more about the inspiration and the sci-fi stuff on the record. But before, before that, you know, going on to uh, sort of yourself and what you've learned about yourself as an artist, because obviously you've had quite a career from writing with Weezer at the start to starting the rentals and, and all those different experiences. So... I kind of want to ask you, you know, you've talked a little bit about it and how you've become more comfortable, uh, but what have you learned about yourself through from the very start of your career as a musician with Weezer and all the stuff that will happen with that to now, you know, putting out records with the rentals and all the collaborations you're doing. What have you learned about yourself as an artist? And I guess on a wider level as a person. Ooh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure how to answer that, you know. Um, the, <clears throat> I guess the thing is that, that I've talked about uh, somewhat uh, recently is before uh, Weezer started, when I was just, you know, I, uh, like, uh, like many um, uh, musicians, kind of, I started out basically at, 13 or 12 or whatever, carrying a tennis racket and, you know, pretending uh, it was a guitar and sort yeah. of you know, lip syncing to whatever albums you were listening to at the time, you know, 
uh, probably would have been like a kinks record for me or something like that. Uh, and, uh, and from that like very early age without having, uh, without having any, uh, talents at all uh you just believe oh yeah this is who i am <laughs> you know i am a musician you kind of proclaim it boldly and proudly and all these things but you don't actually have uh you don't actually have any um uh you know skills or whatever and when as i got to be you know older in my late teens and my my early 20s uh you you know you realize that you you know you want to skip steps to get everything yeah. Yeah. you know you want to just uh you and and this is in like in love and in music and in everything we just want to be able to like go oh you know uh <laughs> can i can i uh can i do the thing that will make it so i don't actually have to do the work you know because <laughs> i don't know what i'm doing i don't know how to get there i don't uh, all these things, right? Like you, you mm -hmm. proclaim to be this thing and you're somewhat of a phony because you're proclaiming to say, yes, I'm a musician, you know, while well, all you can do is play the tennis racket. And, and, and uh, but you would like to just do whatever the thing is that can allow you to, to move right uh, ahead of, of that. Uh, like a, a good example of that is before Weezer started, I, I was, I had lived with Rivers before uh, the band started, and then I moved to uh, San Francisco, or outside of San Francisco, outside of uh, Berkeley College yeah. uh, in Northern California. And this is a good example of that. I lived close to the Berkeley campus. Uh, I worked uh, two jobs that were close to the Berkeley campus, and I wanted to basically act like I was, <laughs> you know, a learned student of... Uh, you know, this uh, fine institution or whatever, and and uh, would carry around, you know, uh, you know, a little Proust or whatever it might be or something to feel like I was, you know, in uh, this, you know, a, an academic. But yeah. actually, you don't go to that college and you don't take the classes and you haven't really read the books and you aren't uh, this kind of thing. And I remember a friend of mine saying, oh, what is it that you want to do? And I said, oh, I want to be, you know, uh, a composer uh, for, uh, for film scores or whatever. I thought that that seemed like, okay, it wasn't, you know, it, it, it seemed a little more elevated than being in a rock and roll band, but a little less, uh, uh, you know, uh, it was already too late to be a full-blown classical musician or whatever, you, you know, whatever the loftiest thing you could think of was. So... I thought, oh, okay, I could be a film composer and I could tell actual real musicians how to, you know, what, yeah. I, what I'm going to hear. And <clears throat> I remember my friend saying, well, you know, this is in Northern California. Well, there's this, uh, there's this area of Northern California called Marin. That's where like Robin Williams lived and all the very, okay, very yeah. like, uh, wealthiest of uh, Northern Californians live around that area. And so, you know, you could go there. If you go to the bars in the in the afternoon, this is like we're twenty years old or twenty one years old or something. Yeah, yeah. And it's like if you go to those bars, you can find uh, like a, a an old souse, you know, like a a, a rich a, a rich lady who just wants young company, <laughs> and right. uh, and you know they'll probably be married or whatever, but they will become your patron and like you know fund your uh, your your uh, ambitions to write music scores or whatever wow. and uh so we drove around <laughs> looking for bars and uh and looking for uh you know lo you know looking to grift uh, uh, a yeah. thing. <laughs> you know, and the, the only reason i tell that story is because uh that's a good sense of just not wanting to do the work not wanting to actually go to a university and learn how to screen you know, those <laughs> To, to, to read music I didn't even know how to do that uh, and uh, you know so instead of the idea of, of studying music and going to college doing the things you need to do it's like oh just find some rich person who will who basically will let you buy a bunch of you know electronic equipment and uh, and uh, you know mess around until you learn uh, learn something um, 
And it wasn't uh, until uh, we decided to start Weezer that I that that all of that went out the window. The idea of skipping steps went completely out the window for me. Uh, and it's it was all about uh, the grind of it. Uh, that it was it was something I just like. Okay, I know we just have to. We have to cut ourselves down to like the lowest form of humanity, believe that we are absolutely nothing, believe that we know absolutely nothing, uh, believe that our songs are absolute shit, uh, <laughs> and just start from that place of like, we are nothing. We have no style. We don't have any sense of who we are as human beings at this point. We don't, you know, we, we just don't have any answers. And now it starts now, and we start grinding now. We do rehearsals where we, we set it up so we had a, I got a little, uh, we rented a little house in um, West Los Angeles, and it had a garage in it, uh, and, we took, and we lied to the owners of the place and told them that we were classical musicians and we were going <laughs> to be making a lot of noise in the garage because we knew nobody would rent to us if we were a rock band. And we soundproofed the, the hell out of it and, you know, set it up so we could, like, very practical. So, like, okay, we can rehearse every single day. Uh, and we can, you know, do all those kind of things, like, whatever. We didn't have any money, so it was, you know, go find some used carpet so you could, you know, nail it to the walls and do all the things, you know, so all that kind of stuff. Just yeah. more, what can you do? What's practical? What's... Uh, and that thing, uh, that uh, philosophy or whatever, uh, or way of looking at life has been with me uh, uh, till now. I still feel very much uh, <clears throat> like that. Not necessarily that you don't know anything, but that it's just about the work, you know. And, uh, and I'm just not going to become a better singer where I can enjoy myself unless I put in <laughs> the goddamn time to uh you know break my head through the wall with trying to sing on one record uh, <laughs> correctly and you know and you're not going to be able to sing on the next record and have fun unless you kind of put in that work of the the one before or things like that this record is a uh, very layered uh and it's something that that i like it's just been i feel like this is out of all the music that uh that I've been a part of. This is the, the, the most true to 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 uh, understanding who who I am or whatever. Nice. And uh, so much of that is just doing that, like learning how to do that over time. As far as you know, learning how to layer music in a way that is unique to your point of view or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I mean, talk to me about, you know, because obviously we talked about, um, you know, you being able to tell more stories on this record and kind of, you know, being able to collaborate more. So tell me about, you know, some of the inspiration, some of the things that inspired you in the building of this record, you know, in terms of stories, films, books, whatever you were using as inspiration, uh, as creative fuel, so to speak, for Q36. What was motivating you and inspiring you at the time? Well, uh the, the, each song is really case by case. There's nothing. Okay. Like, All right. Yeah. There's nothing like a typical uh, album for me where it's like one uh, one overarching theme and th that covers the whole thing or something like yeah. that. It's really song to song. Uh, the biggest personal thing in my life is that during the time of uh, during the time of the very beginning of those early writing sessions when I told you I was writing some personal things and not yeah. w wanting to be there and then, uh, and then starting over from writing from other points of view. Uh, during that time, my father was uh, quite ill and he, his, like his um, physical condition was going down quite rapidly mm. and, uh, and all of the kind of uh, the, the, um, the, the predictions from the doctors were each time was was worse than the time before you know right oh, you know yeah. your father has three years to live and then wow. you know 
week later it'd be no he has a year and a half to live and then a week later no 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 he has you know six months to live and then next thing you know it's hey you better get on that plane you know uh pronto and uh uh so there was that was going on while i was while i was writing um and in the uh in the shadows of his uh of, of his passing it was just a lot of typical things that families deal with very some very ugly uh <clears throat> things from the from his second wife and yeah and so it was just a, a time that was was uh really uh brutal uh and uh, really i wasn't able to bury my father uh, for instance so there was yeah those kinds, those kinds of things wasn't able to say goodbye to him due to all the strife and the family of course. Uh, and during that time i was working on this music and when i stepped back from the uh writing the, the uh, like i said i had a goal of to start of writing 50 songs and then it was just when I hit that number, it was just okay. Stop and take a take a step back and try to see, you know, the uh, <clears throat> the uh, detective show uh, trope where you have all the uh, the yarn in the uh, you know the little uh, in, in the uh, pegboard and you're putting this photo to that photo and all the detective shows. Yeah, I think there's something like that with uh, with taking this approach that I take. So you you know, kind of have these 50 songs and you say, okay, where are the connections between these or what's going on here? What's the, where, and it wasn't in all of them. I'd say probably it was in half of them that, uh, that escape was a, a very big theme. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That being the, that the songs, a big majority of the songs taking place in outer space uh, was uh, something or being, or being, you know, as I said, uh, the songs are about other people's stories. And within all of that, there was just the common feeling of, uh, well, especially now with some, with quite a bit of distance, is yeah. that you could say, oh, I just didn't want to be here on Earth at the time, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it just did, the Earth wasn't a very attractive place, and it wasn't, uh, so... I could lose myself in these, you know, um, these stories and the, the songs are so, let's see, like, uh, one of the songs is a song called Forgotten Astronaut, uh, yeah. is about, uh, the astronaut, uh, Michael Collins, who was, uh, the, the chief pilot, I guess, for, uh, Apollo 11. I don't know how they exactly have their titles. Uh, but I read his book uh, called Flying to the Moon, and I was absolutely fascinated. Uh, he's a great storyteller. Uh, seems to be, uh, I don't know him personally, seems to be just such a, a sweet uh, and humble person in many ways, uh, and funny as hell, he was self-deprecating, and all of these things. And I was working on the song, and as I was, uh, just early, early uh, stages of it, uh, I, it might not even have been uh, specifically about him. And I was sort of just kind of, things were taking shape. Somebody would say like, oh, what are you working on now? And I said, oh, I think I'm about to work on this song about Michael Collins. And yeah. with, without fail, anybody that I said, said that to said, you know, who the, who the hell is Michael Collins? And that just blew my mind, you know, that you could have, a figure uh, like him that could be uh, so, uh, you know, one of the most important people uh, of our time, accomplishing what, you know, is seen, uh, uh, you know, as one of the most significant uh, events in human history. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would Nobody knows who, who actually flew the thing to get us there or got us home, you know? Yeah, but yeah. Because he wasn't, you know, he didn't have a snazzy uh, superhero name like uh, Buzz Aldrin or, uh, you know, Neil Armstrong, and, and he didn't bounce up and down on the moon. And uh, but I, and I just thought that was, this, the song isn't really about people not um, knowing him. It was just, it, the song is more about... Uh, him having very human thoughts while, while those two, while his, uh, <clears throat> while his 
two uh, friends are on the moon. Yeah. Uh, it just he has about 24 hours essentially where he's yeah. uh, waiting for them to come back to their uh, to their capsule and, and and head back to Earth. And it was just my thought was, well, he you know it's not in the uh, in the novel that way, but he must have had just like some silly <laughs> some silly thoughts because he's human after all. Yeah, of course. Uh, so it was just imagining, kind of taking him on, sort of trying to, trying to sort of uh, get into his uh, character, his sort of self-deprecating sense of humor, uh, sort of into his mindset, and see the song is sung from his perspective, and he's just having these both really silly thoughts and other, you know, other ones that sort of take in the big picture of, of, of what's yeah. going on. Because that's one of what you know. I think those first astronauts of uh, of uh, Mercury and Gemini and uh, Apollo were all um, considered these like just cartoon like superheroes. You know, they were just the all American, perfect human beings. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I, it was just I always thought, oh, uh, you know, the like like anybody, your mind drifts and you have the. the so that was something like that. And so yeah. I could get lost in him for ever and his uh uh and uh, read as much as i could about him and watch as many interviews uh with him sort of in current day because he's he's still with us yes. and uh and i just adored him and so that would be like a person i could just get lost in and not not kind of face uh you know whatever 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 was going on in my personal life that was like, yeah yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's, it's, it's, it's really cool to, so thanks for sharing that with me as well, um, all the stuff there, because I think that's some, you know, obviously some, some personal stuff to start with, but just the, the depth you've gone to research the person, you know, is, is lovely to, to hear that, you know what I mean, that you've got that love and you actually went out there and, you know, was researching interviews and stuff. I think that's great. It's a great uh, sort of motivator for, I guess, creating. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, the, there was a thing in the, well, we made a, a, a video for that song with people that uh, um, of the of footage of Michael and and, and the other astronauts during during Apollo 11, uh, and the people that made it were uh, connected to him. Uh, they were doing another another project with him. Yeah, uh, and so I was fortunate enough to have some very limited contact. I've never spoken with him directly. Um, but I was able to uh, have contact through his daughters, who are his um, managers, essentially. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they listened to the song, and they read through the through the lyrics, and that alone, to me, was just uh, such a uh, awesome. Like it, it almost like brought me to tears. The thought, the thought of that that connection could be made. Uh, for such a small, like little independent thing um, that we're that we've self-released and has no, you know, <laughs> whatever, to be able to actually uh, do all that uh, research and that, or 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 just you know, connecting with him in in that way, and then actually to be able to have some personal connection was extraordinary. And the the thing that came back was. Um, you know, Michael's okay with the song, except for he really uh, doesn't care for this word jealousy that's in uh, uh, in in a lyric that's in the song. Yeah, uh, and that was like kind of a uh, somewhat of a uh, maybe a deal breaker uh, with the because he was you know adamant about well I was never jealous at any point you know that. Uh, that I was there to do my job. I'm a man who's, you know, there. He's very, very serious, and I'm here to, you know, with the, with the responsibilities that I have, and I'm here to, uh, you know, accomplish what I am said to accomplish. And my mind is, you know, dealing with all those things, and I, you know, yeah, whatever. So I was uh, at some point able to write to him uh, through his daughters and just write a note, and it wasn't up to my standard of. Uh, being able to, I, it was felt like too heavy to be able to convey it, but uh, but I had to try to explain to him that the thought, the 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 idea, the the, the lyric in the song is basically 
him calculating how many uh, uh, women are watching the the, uh, the the Neil and Buzz on the moon. And he figures, okay, well, there's 560 million televisions, you know, uh, that have this on around the world. I think that was the number or somewhere around there. Uh, and so, and the population is such and such. So there's actually more women on the planet in uh, 69 than there are men. So you know, and he kind of does it. And he goes, okay, so there are 300,000 women watching uh, uh, Neil uh, say, you know, uh, one st small step and all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, so he's kind of doing the calculation. It's, and, and then kind of catches himself. And he says, you know, I, uh, I know what I know, and I know it's just jealousy, you know, is the lyric that follows that and uh, follows those calculations. And, but I feel what I feel, and I feel it endlessly is the next line. Yeah. And so all, and so they, he was like, well, I just, I can't get with, <laughs> I can't get with that. The idea of, you know, jealousy or something like that, that that was something I said, well, the, my point was never that you were feeling jealous or you were feeling yeah. uh, or anything. It's just that you're human and you could have any thought. It could be any dumb thought. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, my point was you have, you have dumb thoughts. You have, of course, you have the weight of the world on your shoulders as well. But in the yes. midst of all that, in the midst of the uh, most harrowing uh, moments, you still can think, oh, I wonder what so-and-so is doing back at home or <laughs> like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so I was just trying to show that and that it wasn't a literal thing that I was, a, you know, uh, uh, kind of a, anything to insult his character uh, and, uh, you know, whatever. And so, and so that, I know that that reached him and that, that, that explanation got to him. And, uh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. And what, what a cool, what, what an amazing story as well, that collaboration, you know, you were able to take it to his daughters who then, and obviously them reading through the lyrics. Like I say, that, that to me, that's great success as an artist. That, that was my next question. We've got a couple more. And, you know, my, my next question was, how do you define success as somebody that's, you know, been able to tour the world and obviously, you know, as part of those first Weezer records, you've obviously put out great stuff with the rentals and, and having that happen to you, uh, you know, in this with this record and having, you know, somebody that you wrote a song about, you know, and have, have him respond and, and those kind of things. That must be amazing. So um, in summary, then, how do you define success as a person? What does success mean to you? Yeah, you know, I, it's, it's hard to go into those things without going into a, a, a lot of uh, uh, stereotype uh, type, uh, not stereotypes, but just, uh, you know, cliches of it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like, they're almost like sports cliches, but it's, you know, more about the journey than the destination and all those kind of cliches. Yeah. There, there's, in some cases, <laughs> there's reasons that those cliches became cliches because it, uh, it basically is about the, 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 the journey, uh, in that sense. Uh, I don't, uh, and this this has been since since Weezer started, uh, and since uh, up until you know up until this this album was released a couple of days ago. Um, the music that 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 I've been a part of that I've made has never been made with any consideration for fans uh, or critics or or anybody. It's not made for anyone but ourselves. And uh, in, in, I'm not thinking about it uh, in terms of, uh, you know, will this be, uh, you know, will this be a commercial success in, in any way? Yeah. It, it, or, or trying to make something as a reaction to something that's happening, you know, on radio when radio was uh, a popular medium or when or when mtv was doing it you know when when weezer started we kind of pledged to never make a a, a music video that was one of the, <laughs> right and, and we were pretty adamant about it and we wouldn't ever have done uh done one uh and unless it had been for spike the the guy who yeah, made of course most well-known videos but it was only because we wouldn't have made it just to make it. 
it was oh we'll make this because because I was a uh, just a a big admirer of his and he was just getting started but I, you you knew he was somebody special and that yeah. he was his own voice and so that but so the the way we made that album uh, it wasn't we weren't trying to do anything that was reacting off of anything in popular culture. We weren't thinking about it. And it was just what, what do we want to hear from ourselves? Who are we? A lot of all that self introspection stuff. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the uh, monetary success of it, or just the, you know, or the acceptance from an audience, all of that to me is, you know, it's very, uh, you, you feel very like humble from it. And it's, and it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing to know that other people connect with something that, that you connect with, that you care about. Uh, that's, you know, it's, uh, that can take your breath away. That, uh, of course. that, that thing, especially on the, the sort of like the kind of extraordinary, uh, good fortune that, that, that Weezer was able to accomplish. Um, but it's never done for those people, you know, that's just all icing on the cake, you know, uh, and I've lived my life pretty much that way ever since I just don't think about, uh, what do, uh, what do the fans of, of, uh, you know, we, I have a, a, a small following of people that have been very, uh, very, uh, generous with me. Uh, and I, you know, I love the the hell out of them and respect and respect them, and I'm grateful for them. But none of it is done for them, and none of it is done in the, the thought of I wonder if they'll like this or not. I just don't care. <laughs> just my thought is, I just have to make whatever it is that that I that I want to hear. You know, and that uh, I'm trying to write a story, and I'm not thinking about the audience of that. Uh, that's going to accept it. Either they accept it or they don't, and it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, like before this uh, album, there was a, a project I did, an arts project called Songs About Time, and it started in 2009. And when it went from 2009 to 2010, it was a full year of a tremendous amount of uh, of uh, output. Uh, yeah. For the people I was collaborating with, and we were making short film. We were making a single short film every week. We were putting out uh, a, a new sort of like elongated uh, EP every uh, three months. We were making you know all this different. We were doing all these different things with photography and all of this, and and nobody was watching or listening. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right. or very, very few people. You know, it was done with a lot of people from different countries and different. There was a lot of, you know, I guess it would be considered quite pretentious. There was uh, quite a bit of voiceovers, of uh, French voiceovers and Portuguese voiceovers and uh, Japanese voiceovers and, and uh, Spanish voiceovers and all this different stuff uh, with, uh, you know, some uh, friends of mine, different artists singing the songs in their language and all this, this kind of stuff. Uh, and it just didn't connect with anybody. Yeah. Uh, or not, it didn't connect in a way that, I could that I could feel. I mean, maybe there are a few a few out there, but it didn't feel uh, like we were getting any kind of feedback that it was really, you know, whatever having any sort of concrete. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. There was no. I, I. I. But it didn't matter. And then when it ended, it felt like the most successful thing I'd ever done. You know, because it was so ambitious as far as what we were. Uh, trying to do day to day, week to week, month to month, and we made all these pledges uh, to say, okay, we're going to do a film every week, uh, but we didn't have any idea about like what are the films about, and probably I'm going to guess a very high percentage of them are unwatchable. Yeah. Uh, but but the idea was it doesn't matter. We just we're going to make a short film every week. We're, we're gonna we're gonna you know, think of what we can on a Wednesday, work, you know, shoot on Thursday and Friday, uh, cut it. And this is before, this was just at the dawn of being able to do stuff on your laptop, but most people weren't doing it too much at that point in, in 09. Uh, 
and we're gonna you know cut it on 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 over the weekend and then put up that short film on Tuesday and we did that every single week for a year so we did 52 of them um, and that was success to me you know it was just like oh my god we <laughs> we said we were gonna do this like really stupid thing and we and and everybody believed in it and all the like the not not uh, not the people that were not the audience but the people that worked on it were they believed there was a real schedule you know and it was just something we had made up in our minds uh that this was we laid it out okay we're going to do it on this tuesday and this tuesday and this then we kind of gave everybody okay short film number whatever 23 comes out on june whatever you know yeah. and and everybody bought in and was passionate about not missing a single date and not and never you know never letting anything go and, yeah. uh, and that was like a very big success and uh as far as when you asked me the definition and on this uh record there are so many of those things um that are uh so many different people that we collaborated with we did a uh a partnership with uh joseph gordon levitt the actor he has a a, a creative community called hit record uh, and you can find out about them on uh, their websites, hitrecord.org. Um, and he runs this uh, uh, website for creative people who are just looking for uh, prompts, essentially, to get them started, to get the cobwebs yeah. off, something yeah. to start, whatever. Uh, it, it could be for uh, graphic uh, drawings, or it could be for poetry, or it could be for short stories or photography, or they do a lot with voice acting. And we partnered with them from the, the beginning to like t whatever song we were putting out, <clears throat> we would take little elements out of it and say, uh, like, oh, for instance, the song that's uh, current, the, the last song that we released on this record was called Shake Your Diamonds. And uh, the opening line is, uh, my soul is not at peace under the blood red sky. So maybe you take that yeah. line and say, okay, start a, a poem that starts with my soul is not at peace under the blood of your sky. And then you can write whatever the hell you want, you know, <laughs> follow, follow your, where does, where, where does that lead your thoughts? You use yeah. that as a diving board to just, just to do something, just to get your, uh, j just to get going in case you're having writer's block or whatever it might be. Or will some lyric will, you know, in that, in that same lyric, you might take it and say, uh, you know, paint a bit blood red sky for us. What is that? Uh, you know, what, uh, you know, if, uh, if you're a graphic artist and graphic arts will do various things like that or uh, all kinds of things. Uh, yeah. And the big thing that surprised me was voice acting. They do a ton of this, which is we just give them a lyric from the song and say, just pick up your phone and, uh, you know, go to the, <laughs> go to the, uh, the, the audio recorder and just like, you know, your voice memos and just hit record and just record this just say this line uh you could say it in a variety of voices you could say it as characters you could say it as whatever yeah just record yourself and that's like the most successful like as far as numbers go like we're hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people are recording these lines and they're hysterical like doing them in all kinds of different strange ways yeah, yeah. Uh, so like things like that and from that i i would say we've done hundreds of prompts uh from this record and all of these different collaborators from all over the world, all different backgrounds of people, all most of them having no connection with me in any way, which is uh, what I think every artist sort of wants in their life in some way that you're always that you're connecting with new people, and it's so difficult. Uh, you usually have, you know, I mean, this I'm not, uh, you know, I've been very fortunate in my life, so I'm not complaining. But once you have your following, it's always every artist is always kind of hoping to like break outside of that a little bit and bring in some new people and people that will not judge you for your work of the past or not judge me for instance on the first rentals record or the first music i did with weezer or whatever just judge you on hey what is the song that's before me right now do i like it or do i not like it you know uh and not carry all the baggage from your whatever good and bad baggage that you had from your uh, past and that uh, the collaboration uh, with Joseph was 
really opened us up to all these different creative people who don't give a fuck that I was in Weezer or the rentals are just like, oh, here's a cool line to start a poem, you know? Uh, and there's been a bunch of that. So that's been wonderful. Uh, and the other, uh, well, there's a bunch, but the other uh, one that comes to mind is at the very beginning, uh, I went to a graphic artist that I really love. His name is uh, Ivan Minslaw. Uh, and he uh, does just extraordinary tour posters for bands. Um, and I, he had done a tour poster for, uh, the, for the rentals on our previous record. And yeah. I always wanted to work with him, but it's like, uh, but so I gave him this, this thought of, why don't you just create something, whatever you want, T-shirt, uh, a poster, a, a, whatever it is, just a graphic that, that, that you uh, want off of uh, anything that is within the song. Yeah. It doesn't, have to, it doesn't have to promote the rentals. It doesn't have to promote me. It doesn't have to really, it just has to be whatever you, you, you listen to the song, you read the lyrics and see if there's to be a single word that's in there, a feeling, an overall feeling, but just something that just creates something off of, of uh, whatever you want. Uh, and we've done that for every song on this record. So sort of in that same way we were making short films, it was one of those weird things where it's like, can we, you know, can, can we actually create uh, you know, 16 different uh, you know, uh, individual uh, designs for for each song, and we we just today put out the the one for uh, Shake Your Diamonds, which I really love. Awesome! Uh, oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out now. Oh man, honestly, he, mate, he is absolutely. Uh, I I uh, definitely uh, encourage you know all your listeners to like to check out Ivan's work. He's incredible. He's just uh, I'm such such a big fan of his. And and, and like you asked, what is success? Well, you know what what we were able to do together. Uh, out of nothing, it feels like you know that's that's the idea of success. That's amazing, man! It's amazing, and thank you so much for sharing. You know the sort of uh, process of the record because it's great to hear. You know that, that you've you've got such a creative flow and been been able to not only create opportunities for yourself but other people as well. I think that's fantastic that you're you're able to collaborate with other people and create. A, feels like you've got a real collective of people. You know what I mean. Like well, it's always <clears throat> and it's always evolving, you know. I mean, the, yeah. the idea of the rental started out that way, that we weren't a traditional band, that it was going to be basically, you know, so nobody ever felt that they were like <laughs> they had to do it because they made a commitment. It was more like, uh, you know, who are my friends that are, uh, you know, they were that we're connected at the moment and getting along and want to do something together, and they want to do it and I want to do it, and we, you know, so they're. So uh, everybody has that, that good energy is brought into every recording. That's what you strive for. Yeah. Uh, sure. But with this kind of thing, uh, like I, the, I, we talked about at the very beginning, it was like, that I feel so much more open to, I'm not telling Ivan what to design. <laughs> you know, I mean, we, yeah. work, we work together. He wants feedback like any creative person wants feedback. And we work together, but ultimately he can say, "No, this is what I want." You know, this is this is how I hear the song. Yeah. Um, but I love it, and I love the feeling of not knowing who your next creative partner is going to be, and that uh, you know that you get to spend some time with new people and kind of get curious about home and what what makes you tick and where do we connect and all of those kind of, uh, those kind of things. hundred percent, man. hundred percent. It's cool. Um, just before we finish off then, the last question is, um, obviously you talked about a couple of nice memories when you first toured over here with Weezer, but obviously we're in the UK. Can we expect you over here post pandemic? Uh, are you planning on touring the stuff? And no, <clears throat> no, pretty right. much. No. <laughs> but fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, uh, I, I wish it was yes. Uh, but, uh, for, uh, it's too long to get into now. Yeah. Uh, the, the, but unfortunately, the answer is no. One thing is that the this album Q thirty six was um, done essentially in the reverse way that most people make a record. 
uh, or or promote a record. They promote, you know, you you put out a full record and then you sort of dissect it. At, you know, okay, here's a single and here's yeah, the yeah. next single and here's the thing and we're going to be in your town and we're kind of doing this. With this, we did it in the reverse order where we brought out one song at a time as we're going through and sharing the record that way. And it feels like, to me personally, with all of these collaborations, the tour was the way we shared it with everybody, you know? Uh, yeah. It feels like we had such a, uh, the, the, like the depth of connection with the people that are listening. Uh, yeah. And felt so much more uh, apparent and real that they were like, uh, that they were able to under, like, I don't know, connect with, it. there's so many like variables, but like uh, just that, in, in some things, we're able to show them. Uh, Ronnie Venucci played drums uh, uh, on the album. He played over top of these loops that I created. Nice, nice. And we were able to share with this, this crappy little uh, video camera I took. My a friend urged me, if you're, you know, Ronnie is incredible. He's been a cool. friend for a long time. Uh, and he's like, my friend is like, if you're having the drummer from The Killers play on your, your album, you have to film this, you know? Yeah. But, uh, and I had no thought of doing it. And so like the day before we started, we did it in two, two days in Las Vegas. Uh, I went to like a, a cheap electronic store, bought this, the cheapest little video camera ever and recorded him, uh, you know, sporadically recording different things. Yeah. And you like get such a connection when there's these uh, bunch of videos of him recording uh, on, on YouTube that anybody can find. And you just get a sense of, how important he is to the record and his uh, the energy that he brings to it and what makes him you unique and uh, and it's it's those kind of things in a traditional way we wouldn't have been able to share to because do yeah yeah and and because of the pandemic I mean the pandemic obviously is a god awful thing but we we've had a lot of people at home where they have a they have a an extra second to like. So, okay, well, I, I can't leave my place. <laughs> well, maybe I'll see some of these behind the scene things and get nice. a better kind of deeper thought. And it feels so much more rich than just putting out a full album and going on tour. And by the, this, uh, you know, this, uh, I'm going to be kind of like cleaning up the end of the record and getting the vinyl being ready to ship. Yes. And once the vinyl ships, it feels like it's, it's over, you know? It just yeah. feels like, wow, we went through a big <laughs> adventure together yeah. with uh, our the people that are nice enough to follow us. And it just feels complete to me. So, yeah, man. Yeah, special. It's de definitely special. Absolutely. I'm really, I'm, really, I'm, really, I'm really pleased for you, mate. I'm really pleased you've been able to do this because I think it sounds, you know, like I say, it sounds cool. You're obviously happy with it, which is lovely. Um, but yeah, sorry when you're not going to be able to come to the UK with it, man. Uh, I'm, I'm gutted about that. Oh but, man, I haven't been to the UK in so long. The yeah. Last time, the last time was uh, probably in like 2004 or three or something like that. Uh, was an acoustic thing with uh, this band Golden Boy. Right. Uh, and we played just like we I don't know we played like in an art loft, um, uh, and. I just remember a, a couple, a couple, uh, a couple mates that were like just from the pub, like you know, just like play the Moog, you know, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like because we had a little uh, Moog synthesizer. Yeah, yeah. And that was very funny. Uh, it just made me laugh. Just of like, you know, yeah, you're p trying to play these acoustic synth songs, but just play the fucking Moog, you know. Nice. Uh, it was kind of beautiful. Uh, and so I miss it. I definitely do. And uh, and you know, you never say never with stuff. But uh, absolutely, man. It doesn't seem very likely. Absolutely. Well, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, at some point, we'll see you back. And, and thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for spending uh, so much time with me and talking me through the record and stuff. It's really, really cool. And uh, I love those. You know, I can't thank you enough. Just having of course. people when you do something uh, that's uh, an independent kind of thing in a in a not in a non traditional way. Yeah, you, you just get so grateful for people that are uh, you know willing to 
help you share it with other other folks that might not hear it otherwise so i really of course, appreciate man. Time to, uh, of to course man absolutely 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 and mate uh, congratulations again on, on the record and, and take care of yourself and i'm I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to catching up with you again down the road all right oh definitely anytime take care take care matt thank you so much bye bye mate bye Uh, that's you know, it's uh, that can take your breath away. That uh, of course that that thing, especially on the the sort of like the kind of extraordinary uh, good fortune that, that that Weezer was able to accomplish. Um, but it's never done for those people. You know, that's just all icing on the cake. You know, uh, and I've lived my life pretty much that way ever since. I, I just don't think about. Uh, what do uh, what do the fans of of uh, you know? We, I have a, a, a small following of people that have been very uh, very uh, generous with me, uh, and I you know I love the the hell out of them and respect and respect them, and I'm grateful for them. But none of it is done for them, and none of it is done in the, the thought of. Ooh, I wonder if they'll like this or not. I just don't care. <laughs> it just my thought is, I just have to make whatever it is that that I that I want to hear, you know, and that uh, I'm trying to write a story, and I'm not thinking about the audience of that uh, that's going to accept it. Either they accept it or they don't, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, like before this. Uh, album there was a, a project i did an arts project called songs about time and it started in 2009 and when, when it went from 2009 to 2010 it was a full year of a tremendous amount of uh of uh output uh, yeah for the people i was collaborating with and we were making short film we were making a single short film every week we were putting out a a, a new sort of like elongated uh, ep every uh, three months we were making you know all this different we were doing all these different things with photography and all of this and and nobody was watching or listening you know <laughs> <laughs> right. or very, very few people you know it was done with a lot of people from different countries and different there was a lot of you know I guess it would be considered quite pretentious there was a, a quite a bit of voiceovers of uh, French voiceovers and Portuguese voiceovers and uh, Japanese voiceovers and and uh, Spanish voiceovers, all this different stuff uh, with, uh, you know, some uh, friends of mine, different artists singing the songs in their language and all this, this kind of stuff. Uh, and it just didn't connect with anybody yeah. uh, or not. It didn't connect in a way that I could, that I could feel. I mean, maybe there are a few, a few out there, but it didn't feel uh, like we were getting any kind of feedback that it was really, you know, whatever, having any sort of, concrete <laughs> i don't know whatever there was no I, I i but it didn't matter and then when it ended it felt like the most successful thing i'd ever done you know because it was so ambitious as far as what we were uh, trying to do day to day week to week month to month and we made all these pledges uh to say okay we're going to do a film every week uh but we didn't have any idea about like what are the films about and probably I'm going to guess a very high percentage of them are unwatchable. Yeah. Uh, but, but the idea was it doesn't matter. We just, we're going to make a short film every week. We're, we're going to, we're going to 
you know, think of what we can on a Wednesday, work, you know, shoot on Thursday and Friday, uh, cut it. And this is before, this was just at the dawn of being able to do stuff on your laptop, but most people weren't doing it too much at that point in, in 09. Uh, and we're going to, you know, cut it on, on, on over the weekend and then put up that short film on Tuesday. And we did that every single week for a year. So we did 52 of them. Um, and that was success to me. You know, it was just like, oh my God, we, we, we said we were going to do this like really stupid thing. And we, and, and everybody believed in it and all the, like the, not, not, uh, not the people that were, not the audience, but the people that worked on it were, they believed there was a real schedule, you know, and it was just something we had made up in our minds uh, that this was, we laid it out. Okay. We're going to do it on this Tuesday and this Tuesday and this day. And we kind of gave everybody, okay, short film number, whatever, 23 comes out on June, whatever, you know, yeah. and, and everybody bought in and was passionate about not missing a single date and not, and never, you know, never letting anything go. And, yeah. uh, that was like a very big success. And uh, as far as when you asked me the definition and on this uh, record, there are so many of those things um, that are uh, so many different people that we collaborated with. We did a, uh, a partnership with uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt, the actor. He has a, a, a creative community called hit record. Uh, and you can find out about them on uh, their websites, hitrecord.org. Um, and he runs this uh, uh, website for creative people who are just looking for uh, prompts, essentially, to get them started, to get the cobwebs yeah. off, something yeah. to start, whatever. Uh, it, it could be for uh, graphic uh, drawings, or it could be for poetry, or it could be for short stories or photography, or they do a lot with voice acting. And we partnered with them from the, the beginning to like t whatever song we were putting out, <clears throat> we would take little elements out of it and say, uh, like, oh, for instance, the song that's uh, current, the, the last song that we released on this record was called Shake Your Diamonds. And uh, the opening line is, uh, my soul is not at peace under the blood red sky. So maybe you take that line and say, okay, start a, a poem that starts with my soul is not at peace under the blood of your sky. And then you can write whatever the hell you want, you know, and follow, follow your, where does, where, where does that lead your thoughts? You use yeah. that as a diving board to just, just to do something, just to get your, uh, j just to get going in case you're having writer's block or whatever it might be, or will some lyric will, you know, in that, in that same lyric, you might take it and say, uh, you know, paint a bit blood red sky for us. What is that? Uh, you know, what, uh, you know, if, uh, if you're a graphic artist and graphic arts will do various things like that or uh, all kinds of things. Uh, yeah. And the big thing that surprised me was voice acting. They do a ton of this, which is we just give them a lyric from the song and say, just pick up your phone and, uh, you know, go to the, <laughs> go to the, uh, the, the audio recorder and just like, you know, your voice memos and just hit record and just record this, just say this line. Uh, you could say it in a variety of voices. You could say it as characters. You can say it as whatever. Yeah. Just record yourself. And that's like the most successful, like as far as numbers go, like we're hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people are recording these lines and they're hysterical, like doing them in all kinds of different strange ways. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so like things like that. And from that, I, I would say we've done hundreds of prompts uh, from this record. And all of these different collaborators from all over the world, all different backgrounds of people, all most of them having no connection with me in any way, which is uh, what I think every artist sort of wants in their life in some way that you're always that you're connecting with new people, and it's so difficult. Uh, you usually have, you know, I mean, this I'm not, uh, you know, I've been very fortunate in my life, so I'm not complaining. But once you have your following, it's always every artist is always kind of hoping to like break outside of that a little bit and bring in some new people and people that will not judge you for your work of the past or not judge me for instance on the first rentals record or the first music I did with Weezer or whatever just judge you on hey what is this song that's before me right now do I like it or do I not like it 
you know, uh, and not carry all the baggage from your whatever good and bad baggage that you had from your uh, past. And that uh, the collaboration uh, with Joseph was really opened us up to all these different creative people who don't give a fuck that I was in Weezer or the rentals are just like, oh, here's a cool line to start a poem, you know? Uh, and there's been a bunch of that. So that's been wonderful. Uh, and the other, uh, well, there's a bunch, but the other uh, one that comes to mind is at the very beginning, uh, I went to a graphic artist that I really love. His name is uh, Ivan Minslaw. Uh, and he uh, does just extraordinary tour posters for bands. Um, and I, he had done a tour poster for, uh, the, for the rentals on our previous record. And I had always wanted to work with him, but it's like, uh, but so I gave him this, this thought of, why don't you just create something, whatever you want, t-shirt, uh, a poster, a, a, whatever it is, just a graphic that, that, that you, uh, want off of, uh, anything that is within the song. Yeah. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to promote the rentals. It doesn't have to promote me. It doesn't have to really. It just has to be whatever you 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 listen to the song. You read the lyrics and see if there's to be a single word that's in there, a feeling, an overall feeling, but just something that just creates something off of of uh, whatever you want. Uh, and we've done that for every song on this record. So sort of in that same way, we're making short films. It was one of those weird things where it's like, can we, you know, can, can we actually create, uh, you know, 16 different, uh, you know, uh, individual uh, designs for, for each song? And we, we just today put out the, the one for uh, Shake Your Diamonds, which I really love. Awesome. Uh, oh, man, I'm going gonna, gonna to check that out now. Oh, man, he, honestly. He, mate, he is absolutely. Uh, I, I uh, definitely uh, encourage you know, all your listeners are like to check out Ivan's work. He's incredible. He's just, uh, I'm such, such a big fan of his. And, and and like you asked, what is success? Well, you know, what, what we were able to do together, uh, out of nothing, it feels like, you know, that's, that's the idea of success. That's amazing, man. It's amazing. And thank you so much for sharing, you know, the sort of uh, process of the record. Cause it's great to hear, you know, that, that you've, you've got such a creative flow and been, been able to not only create opportunities for yourself, but other people as well. I think that's fantastic that you're, you're able to collaborate with other people and create a, it feels like you've got a real collective of people, you know what I mean? Like create. Yeah, well, it's always, <clears throat> and it's always evolving, you know I mean? The, yeah. the idea of the rental started out that way that we weren't a traditional band, that it was going to be basically, you know, so nobody ever felt that they were like, <laughs> they had to do it because they made a commitment. It was more like, uh, you know, who are my friends that are, uh, you know, that were, that were connected at the moment and getting along and want to do something together and they want to do it and I want to do it. And we, you know, so they're, so uh, everybody has that, that good energy is brought into every recording. That's what you strive for. Yeah, uh, sure. but with this kind of thing, uh, like I, the I, we talked about at the very beginning, it was like that I feel so much more open to. I'm not telling Ivan what to design. <laughs> you know, I mean, we, yeah. work, we work together. He wants feedback, like any creative person wants feedback, and we work together. But ultimately, he can say, "No, this is what I want." You know, this is this is how I hear the song. Yeah. Um, but I love it, and I love the feeling of not knowing who your next creative partner is going to be and that, uh, you know, that you get to spend some time with new people and kind of get curious about home and what, what makes you tick and where do we connect and all of those kind of, uh, those kind of things. hundred percent, man. hundred percent. It's cool. And um, just before we finish off then, the last question is, um, obviously you talked about a couple of nice memories when you first toured over here with Weezer, but obviously we're in the UK. Can we expect you over here post pandemic? Uh, are you planning on touring the stuff? And no, <clears throat> no, pretty right. much. No. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, uh, I, I wish it was yes. Uh, but, uh, for, uh, it's too long to get into now. Yeah. Uh, the, the, but unfortunately, the answer is no. One thing is that the this album Q thirty six 
was um, done essentially in the reverse way that most people make a record uh, or or promote a record. They promote, you know, you you put out a full record and then you sort of dissect it. At, you know, okay, here's a single and here's yeah, the yeah. next single and here's the thing and we're going to be in your town and we're kind of doing this. With this, we did it in the reverse order where we brought out one song at a time as we're going through and sharing the record that way. And it feels like, to me personally, with all of these collaborations, the tour was the way we shared it with everybody, you know? Uh, yeah. It feels like we had such a... Uh, the, the, like the depth of connection with the people that are listening. Uh, yeah. And felt so much more uh, apparent and real that they were like uh, that they were able to under like I don't know connect with it. There's so many like variables, but like uh, just that in, in some things we're able to show them. Uh, Ronnie Venucci played drums uh, uh, on the album. He played over top of these loops that I created. Nice, nice. And we were able to share with this, this crappy little uh, video camera I took my a friend urged me if you're you know ronnie is incredible he's been a cool. friend for a long time uh and he's like my friend is like if you're having the drummer from the killers play on your your album you have to film this you know yeah but, uh, and, and i had no I did, thought of doing it and so like the day before we started we did it in two two days in las vegas uh i went to like a, a cheap electronic store bought this the cheapest little video camera ever and recorded him, uh, you know, sporadically recording different things. Yeah. And you, like, get such a connection when there's these uh, bunch of videos of him recording uh, on, on YouTube that anybody can find. And you just get a sense of how important he is to the record and his, uh, the energy that he brings to it and what makes him you unique. And, uh, and it's, it's those kind of things in a traditional way we wouldn't have been able to share to because do, yeah yeah and, and because of the pandemic i mean the pandemic obviously is a god-awful thing but we're we've had a lot of people at home where they have a they have a an extra second to like go okay well i, I can't leave my place <laughs> well maybe i'll see some of these behind the scene things and get nice. a better kind of deeper thought and it feels so much more rich than just putting out a full album and going on tour and by the this uh you know this uh, i'm going to be kind of like cleaning up the end of the record and getting the vinyl being ready to ship yeah, and once shit. the vinyl ships it feels like it's it's over you know it just yeah. feels like wow we went through a big <laughs> adventure together yeah. with uh our the people that are nice enough to follow us and it just feels complete to me so. yeah man yeah special it's de definitely special absolutely i'm really i'm really i'm really i'm really pleased for you mate i'm really pleased you've been able to do this because i think it sounds you know like i say it sounds cool you're obviously happy with it which is lovely um but yeah sorry when you're not going to be able to come to the uk with it man uh, I'm, I'm gutted about that oh but, man i haven't been to the uk in so long the yeah last time, the last time was uh probably in like 2004 or three or something like that uh, was an acoustic thing with uh, this band Golden Boy. Right. Uh, and we played just like, we, I don't know, we played like in an art loft. Um, uh, and <laughs> I just remember a, a couple, a couple, uh, a couple mates that were like just from the pub, like, you know, just like play the Moog, you know, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it was like, because we had a little uh, Moog synthesizer. Yeah, there. yeah. And that was very funny. Uh, it just made me laugh. Just of like, you know, yeah, you're trying to play these acoustic synth songs, but just play the fucking Moog, you know. Nice. Uh, it was kind of beautiful. Uh, and so I miss it. I definitely do. And, uh, and you know, you never say never with stuff. But, uh, Absolutely, man. It doesn't seem very likely. Absolutely. Well, hopefully, yeah, hopefully at some point we'll see you back. And, and thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for spending uh, so much time with me and talking me through the record and stuff. It's really, really cool. And uh, I love those. You know, I can't thank you enough. Just having of course. people, when you do something uh, that's uh, an independent 
kind of thing in a in a not in a non traditional way. Yeah, you, you just get so grateful for people that are uh, you know willing to help you share it with other other folks that might not hear it otherwise. So I really of course, appreciate man. Time to, uh, of to course man, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And mate, uh, congratulations again on, on the record, and, and take care of yourself. And I'm I'm uh, I'm looking forward to catching up with you again down the road. All right. Oh, definitely. Anytime. Take care, take care, Matt. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, mate. Bye.